action. Um, good afternoon. Um, this is Dr. Thomas Klein. I'm coming to you from Raleigh, North Carolina, the home of the National Pain Council, a group of doctors and patients and lawyers and whatever, trying to restore medications taken away from people with long-term painful disease when it was the only drug that works. This borders on cruelty. It was being done by doctors. Why are doctors doing this? Because the CDC, an agency not authorized to even be talking about pain medicine, got together with the DEA, our federal drug police, and the drug police is basically enforcing CDC guidelines. Um, they're practicing medicine. And are they doing this to be mean? No. The federal drug police, or the DEA, was mandated by Congress back in 1974, and they are doing just what they were told to do. So, not to blame the DEA like a lot of people do, but it's a fact of life that the DEA has been put in a role by Richard Nixon and his criminal uh, Attorney General uh, John Mitchell put into the role of regulating this part of our medical practice. To change it, you can't go in and tell the DEA they're doing a bad job. You have to go to Congress and change the law that set them up, which is the Controlled Substance Act, or the CSA for short, of 1970 and 1973. So the National Institutes of Drug Abuse, Nora Volko, the um, director, um, has said in a paper with McClellan that there are 10 million people in the United States that require daily opiates. There are other estimates that 100 billion people in the United States have pain. Well, that, that's, that's not true. 100 million people in the United States may have pain as relieved with aspirin, but the people who need pain medicine 24 hours a day, every four hours, are the chronic pain patients that you hear about. The problem is chronic pain patients is not a real diagnosis. So we are developing a diagnosis and we're going to learn the term cytokine, C-Y-T-O-K-I-N, uh, cytokine, K-I-N-E. What we are discovering by just kind of looking at the obvious things is that people with rare painful diseases, there's about 25 of them, have symptoms of, of inflammation over their whole body. You know, they'll have a painful shoulder, then a painful leg, and then they have tingling, and then they have this dreadful uh, um, uh, fatigue syndrome. They run fevers. They run fevers. The majority of people that we have talked with cannot get out of the bed in the morning under 15 minutes, can't sleep through the night, can't and completely lose their normal activities. What it is, is a body inflammation. How do we measure that? You take a blood test for special chemicals of inflammation called cytokines. Now we've talked about this before, but as my wife says to me, uh, when we're chatting, it bears repeating. So this bears repeating. If a person comes to a doctor and says they have pain all over, they're usually discharged as quacks or nuts. Uh-uh. Listen to the patients. If somebody's had pain for more than three months, they can't get out of bed in the morning, they had pain in a car ride over, 99% have painful joints. There's lots and lots of inflammatory signals that this is a real disease. And as a matter of fact, in our paper 077, which we are working on, which is the uh, compendium of, of rare painful diseases, We're, we have done enough surveys now to give a nice little clinical picture um, that if a person has three or four of these uh, findings, they have a 99% chance of having a systemic inflammatory disease, which in itself has a 
ICD-10 diagnosis code. Doctors don't like to give out medicines to people who have no idea what the diagnosis is. This way, we're going to be able to establish the diagnosis. So, <clears throat> we can start off with establishing the diagnosis of systemic inflammation. And we draw these blood tests for cytokines. And there are cytokines that start up the inflammation, like if you get a splinter in your toe. And then there are cytokines that stop the inflammation when your toe is all better. Somehow these pro-inflammatory cytokines that start the inflammation go haywire. And they just keep on going. It's kind of like the inflammation never goes away. It's reading signals inappropriately. This is what's behind CPP, chronic pain patients. They have real diseases, real diagnoses based on systemic inflammation, very much like the other group of systemic long-term inflammation, the autoimmune diseases. These are really two groups under the heading of systemic inflammatory disease. So you can talk to your doctor about drawing a cytokine panel and other inflammatory markers like C-reactive protein, and that will help make a diagnosis. And we get when we get 077 put together, um, it's taken a while, it's pretty complex, we can share that with you and your doctors. So those people, those 10 million people with the need for daily opiate pain medicine have a real diseases, real systemic inflammatory diseases that can now be diagnosed with blood tests. Thank you and good night.